Mercy. Is it a dominant quality of true Christians? Well, from Jehovah and Jesus, we learn what true mercy is. Now, mercy is commendable, but there is uncertainty as to its real meaning and application. For example, you promise to punish a child if he disobeys. He does disobey. So is it the cost of mercy to withhold punishment? Well, some men think yes, others no. Still others feel it depends on the situation. Frequently, people think mercy is limited to situations where punishment is withheld. How can we know what true mercy is? And when can we and should we display it? How should it affect our dealings with our family members, neighbours, Christian brothers? Jehovah and Jesus are our outstanding examples of mercy, and the Bible describes Jehovah as rich in mercy in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. Turn with me please to Psalm chapter 145 verses 8 and 9. That's Psalm 145, and we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. Jehovah is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great in loving kindness. Jehovah is good to all, and his mercies are over all his works. So we see there, don't we, that Jehovah is a very merciful God. Well, Jesus repeatedly urged showing, to show mercy, and a record of his life proves that he set a fine example in doing such. How do we know this? Well, let's have a look at Matthew, if, uh, particularly uh, Matthew's, Matthew chapters 5 and 9. We'll take 5 first, and we'll take it up from, um, chap- uh, from verse 7. Verse 7 reads, Happy are the merciful, since they will be shown mercy. Now, just a few pages on, in chapter 9, and we'll look at verse 13. Go then and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. For I came to call not righteous people, but sinners. So basically we see there how Jesus is very, very much instrumental in showing mercy. However, more is involved for the Hebrew word rendered mercy is understood to mean basically to be compassionate. Now this is an expression of pity or compassion comparable to the pity or merciful feeling a nursing mother has towards her child. Such, for example, when it is uh, hungry. Let's have a look at Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15. So that's Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49 and verse 15. Can a wife forget her suckling? so that she should not pity the son of her belly. Even these women can forget, yet I myself shall not forget you. So we see there, don't we, that um, Jehovah's mercy towards us, or compassion, is like that of a mother and a suckling child. Now Jesus showed that our mercy should be an active expression of compassionate feelings. When two blind men begged, have mercy on us, uh, Jesus was moved with pity. Let's have a look at that account, shall we, in Matthew chapter 20. In Matthew chapter 20, verses 30 to 34. And look, two blind men sitting beside the road... When they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. But the crowd sternly told them to keep silent. Yet they cried all the louder, saying, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. So Jesus stopped, called them, and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, 
Lord, let our eyes be opened. Moved with pity, Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they received sight and they followed him. So we see there, don't we, how, uh, again, how instrumental Jesus' mercy was, his uh, feelings of compassion towards those two beggars. So what derives from that? We, we not only, in, so he not only felt compassion, but actively expressed it by actually healing them. So he also displayed mercy by giving to others, both spiritually and materially, because he saw they were in need. Let's have a look at another example, just a few pages back to chapter 15 of Matthew. That's chapter 15, and the verses we're going to pay attention to is, uh, is from 32 to 38. But Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel pity for the crowd, because it is already three days that they have stayed with me, and they have had nothing to eat, and I do not want to send them away fasting. They might possibly give out on the road. However, the disciples said to him, where are, where are we in this lonely place going to get sufficient loaves to satisfy a crowd of this size? At this Jesus said to them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven, and a few little fishes. So after instructing the crowd to recline upon the ground, he took the seven loaves and fishes, and after offering thanks, he broke them and began distributing to the disciples. The disciples in turn to the crowds, and all ate and were satisfied, and as a surplus of fragments they took up seven uh, provision baskets full. Yet those eating were four, four thousand men, besides women and young children. So we see there, don't we, that um, again Jesus had pity and compassion for those who were that large crowd who was following him. So mercy then uh, most frequently refers not to a negative holding back from punishing, but to a positive action, to an expression of kind consideration or pity. It is not enough to feel compassion. We must express it if we would be to be merciful. So we are strongly urged to display mercy as a dominant quality in our lives. Now Jesus showed this saying, Happy are the merciful, since they will be shown mercy, such as that scripture that we read in Matthew 5, verse 7. Now it meant the kind of person who is characterised by mercy, who readily displays it, somebody who displays it in their, their entire means of life. So it is to such ones who will be shown mercy by God, because we saw there, didn't we, that, um, that happy are the merciful, because they will be shown mercy. So, but Jesus con condemned certain ones who made gifts of mercy. Well, why was that? Let's have a look at Matthew chapter 6, just a few pages back. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to be looking at verse 2. Hence, when you go on making gifts of mercy, do not blow a trumpet ahead of you, just as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be glorified by men. Truly I say to you, they are having their reward in full. So we see there that, um, that Jesus did condemn certain, certain ones who were making gifts of mercy, those who were doing it uh, in view of others. So the Bible recommends mercy that stems from the right motive. So unlike those ones that we saw there in that uh, particular passage, uh, they were wanting basically favour from men where they want to, want to be looked on in a good light by others. But in actual fact, mercy should have the right motive, the right heart attitude that's um, uh, behind it. Frequently, the mercy that individuals display does not stem from a good motive. During Jesus' ministry, this was true among religious leaders. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 again, uh, if we look at verses 1 to 4, we'll read the entire uh, passage. Take good care not to practice your righteousness in front of men in order to be observed by them. Otherwise you will have no reward with your Father who is in the heavens. 
Hence, when you go making gifts of mercy, do not blow a trumpet ahead of you, just as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be glorified by men. Truly I say to you, they are having their reward in full. But you, when making gifts of mercy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. What your gifts of mercy may be in secret, then your Father, who is looking on in secret, will repay you. So when we show mercy, we want to do it out of a genuine heart, don't we? Now the religious leaders made a showy display of giving, evidencing a bad motive. So that's how we're not to be, isn't it? We have likely seen that the same situation can often exist today. Now some individuals make donations to charity when they are assured that uh, names will be announced or put on the plague on the plaque sorry, as large donors or that donation may be tax deductible. Sometimes material giving is merely an excuse for not mercifully providing what is really needed. How many men give expensive gifts to their wives or children instead of giving it their time, affection and, uh, when, and uh, loving spiritual guidance? Is true mercy evident in those situations? So when stemming from a proper motive, true mercy is refreshing and it's beneficial to everyone. Such mercy is of great help to the recipient and may provide food and clothing. True mercy engenders desirable qualities in the recipient. He is stimulated to be more merciful himself. Uh, mercy begets mercy. Let's have a look at Luke chapter 6. So that's uh, Luke chapter 6. And the verse we're going to look at um, is verse 36. Continue becoming merciful, just as your Father is merciful. So there, we're given an instruction there, aren't we? Now, let's have a look at a couple of um, verses onwards to 38. We'll take up the account there. Practice giving, and people will, will give to you. They will pour into your laps a fine measure, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. For with the measure that you are measuring out, they will measure out to you in return. So that's interesting that there, isn't it? That when we show mercy towards others, it's uh, more likely that they're going to show, show mercy to ourselves and also to others. So mercy, we're learning here, is stemming from a right motive and that encourages empathy and kindness, kind of makes it viral. Such mercy produces lasting and proper satisfaction for the one displaying it. There may not be an outward praise from men, but within yourself you have the satisfaction of knowing you did a fine thing, something that imitates Jehovah's mercy. It also puts one in line for God's blessing. Well, how do we know this? Well, let's have a look at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11. So Proverbs chapter 11 and it's uh, verse 25. The generous soul will, will itself be made fat and the one freely, freely watering others will himself also be freely watered. Now let's move on um, a couple of chapters to chapter 22. And we'll take up uh, from verse 9. He that is kindly in eye will be blessed, for he is given of his food to the lowly one. So the Bible's quite clear there, isn't it? That um, um, you know, that it, it, we have God's blessing, don't we, when we, when we show mercy towards others. But in what practical ways can we show mercy? Does it always involve material things? Well, we should seek to show mercy in our daily life, make it a part of our daily living. Let your material gifts of mercy reflect your Christianity. 
because our Christianity is displayed in all aspects of life and to all people. We do not show kindness and patience toward only our brothers. Now, did not Jesus illustrate the showing of mercy to all? This is going to be a familiar um, Bible passage to you, but let's have a look at Luke chapter 10. That's Luke chapter 10. I'm going to take up the account there from verse 29. But wanting to prove himself righteous, the man said to Jesus, Who really is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers, who both stripped him and inflicted blows, and went off, leaving him half dead. Now by coincidence, a certain priest was going down over that road, but when he saw him, he went by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite also, when he got down to a place and saw him, went by on the opposite side. But a certain Samaritan, travelling the road, came upon him, and at seeing him, it was moved with pity. So he approached him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine upon them. Then he mounted him, uh, mounted him upon his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Just leaping forward to verse 36 there, it says, Who of these three seems to, to you to have made himself neighbour to the man that fell among the robbers? He said, The one that acted mercifully to, toward him. Jesus then said to him, Go your way and be doing the same yourself. So that's a, quite a clear instruction there, isn't it? To, uh, to show mercy to all. Now notice that um, the Samaritan was not only moved with pity, but he acted mercifully toward him. So what would you have done if you were in that situation, in uh, Jesus' parable there? Well, our being no part of a world does not mean being uh, callous to those in the world. So we do not love its ways, manners and false religions. But Christians do love and show mercy to individuals. Your neighbour may be part of a false religious organisation, yet if his house was on fire, would you not warn him? Well, true, how one can best help depends on circumstances. For instance, in Proverbs 3.27, let's take that, that account up. Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, we're going to have a look at verse 27 there. Do not hold back good from those to whom it is owing, when it happens to be in the power of your hand to do it. So um, that's quite a, a good thing to, uh, to reflect on that, isn't it? So if you cannot swim, jumping into water to save someone would not be a practical display of mercy. It's wiser to throw him afloat or quickly seek aid. So each one must decide how and when to display mercy toward fellow humans. So what would be your response to a person in poverty, a begging child or a disabled person? It's not merciful to encourage laziness or drunkenness and so forth. Let's have a look, um, just a few pages on to Proverbs chapter 20. And we're going to take up uh, from one, uh, sorry, verses one, and we'll look at verse four as well. Wine is a ridiculer. Intoxicating liquor is boisterous, and everyone going astray by it is not wise. Verse four, because of winter, the lazy one will not plough. He will be begging in reaping time, but there will be nothing. Now, in some situations, giving money to a person who has asked who asked for it would encourage him in a wrong course. Now, that would not be true mercy. We must uh, balance reasonings of our mind with merciful proddings of heart. 
So preparing a meal for a sick neighbour or helping to care for her children may be one way of your reflecting uh, the mercy Jesus urged in the illustration of a neighbourly Samaritan. Is financial or material giving the most important way that you can show mercy? Well, no, it's not. Uh, spiritual giving can contribute to the everlasting welfare of people. record of Christianity shows that spiritual giving deserves greatest emphasis. The main thrust of Jesus' service was spiritual teaching. In fact, it's well known, isn't it, that um, you know, through the, the um, accounts in Matthew and uh, Luke, etc., um, it shows just how much um, Jesus was uh, geared to doing the preaching work. In fact, making it um, you know, his main goal on earth at that time. Now by his teaching, he gave people reason to change their lives for the better. Now the apostles too concentrated on spiritual giving, aiding persons toward eternal life. Even when apostles healed others as a merciful gift, they directed attention to Jesus. How do we know this? Well, let's have a look at Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Now Peter and John were going up into the temple for the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man that was lame from his mother's womb was being carried, and they were daily put him in near the temple door that was called that was called beautiful, in order to ask gifts of mercy from those entering into the temple. When he caught sight of Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began requesting to to get gifts of mercy. But Peter, together with John, gazed at him and said, Take a look at us. So he fixed his attention upon them, expecting to get something from them. However, Peter said, Silver and gold I do not possess, but what I do have is what I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. So instead of uh, giving um, material possessions to that um, to that chap, uh, he um, he actually received something better than that. He was able to walk again. So rightly then, spiritual giving receives the greatest emphasis among true Christians. So with the new world just ahead, would not be the merciful thing for Christians uh, for a Christian organisation to devote itself to giving medical help or distributing food. Well, no, um, obviously, we, spiritual healing would be far, far more beneficial because it's more longer lasting and uh, will benefit, benefit that person more thoroughly. So with a new world just ahead, would not be the merciful thing for a Christian organisation to devote itself to giving spiritual food? Yes, definitely. Now, witnesses concentrate on spreading the food that remains for everlasting life. Now, all of us can exert ourselves in spiritual giving. Amount to which you can make spiritual gifts of mercy is not limited by financial circumstances. Now, there are still many sincere people who are like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus mercifully responded by teaching truth to such ones, and so can we. Now we can ask ourselves, do I feel moved to do all I can, not viewing it as mere duty? Well, we can also show mercy daily by not being overly critical and by comfort comforting others. Mercifully bear with weaknesses of others, not judging or being overly critical. Now let's have a look at Matthew chapter 7. Verses 1 to 4. That's Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to look at verses 1 to 4. Stop judging that you may not be judged. For with what judgment you are judging, you will be judged. And with the measure that you are measuring out, they will measure out to you. Why then do you look at the straw in your brother's eye? but do not consider the laughter in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, 
allow me to extract the straw from your eye when look a rafter is in your own eye. So we see there, isn't it, how important it is to be merciful towards others so that we too can be shown mercy ourselves. Because uh, once we start judging other people, um, we'd have to judge ourselves for the worst things that we do. So even when one has definitely erred, it may be, it may be a merciful cost simply just to overlook the error. Now those in position to do so might feel it is best to correct an error. Well, yes it is, because let's have a look at Galatians 6.1. Uh, in Galatians chapter 6, and verse 1. Brothers, even though a man takes some false step before he is aware of it, you, have spirit, you who have spiritual qualifications try to readjust such a man in spirit of mildness as you each keep an eye on yourself. For fear you also may be tempted. So we see that quite clearly, don't we, that um, if we see a brother or sister uh, who is about to take a false step, or who's taken a false step, um, you know, it, it's wise to correct them, but in a mild way. So as individuals, if a person realises that he is wrong, you know, why rub it in? To demonstrate that mercy is a, dominant, is a dominant quality in your life is by comforting others. Now Paul urged comforting distressed, depressed souls which would display our mercy and compassion, not doing it as an obligation but because mercy moves us. We have not exhausted the possible ways to show mercy or situations calling for mercy. It can be manifested by material and spiritual giving when moved to do so by right motive. And we can also be merciful in not being too critical or by forgiving and being comforting. Now our display of mercy should extend not only to our family and Christian brothers, but also to others, as in the illustration of a Samaritan that Jesus gave. So we should work to increase the influence of mercy in our lives. Being aware of the scriptural importance of mercy, we can work to increase its influence in our lives. It does not mean having a forced, artificial mercy, but means cultivating it, being conscious of it, and responding to inward impulses to be merciful. Matters require our attention because uh, the imperfe our imperfections work against our being merciful. Now we are confronted constantly with an unmerciful spirit in the world that we live in. The more we let mercy be a dominant quality in our life, the more we will be like Jehovah God. We can expect to be rewarded by God for showing mercy, as uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, which we read earlier. Now God's mercy to us may involve resurrection or uh, per per perseverance into a new world without having to die. Now we have reason to thank him uh, for the mercy of holding out for that hope, don't we? Now the mercy of uh, actually granting us eternal life is even more reason for gratitude and for us to let mercy be a dominant influence in our own lives. So the question is, just how merciful are you? If you would like a free home Bible study at a time and place to suit you, please navigate your browser to jw.org and follow the links online. Thank you for listening.